My mother-in-law kicked me out of her house because she disapproved of my decision to give birth at my parents' home. She forcibly removed me while I was still in my pajamas, not even allowing me to put on shoes. With only my phone in hand, I quickly called my mom, who was close by. I waited for her at a local diner. When my mom and sister learned about the incident, they were furious and immediately took actions that would soon spell trouble for my mother-in-law and my husband. My name is Emma, and I'm 29 years old. I married Jerry, who is 31, a year ago. His father owns a large company, and Jerry is being groomed to take over as the next CEO. He's currently getting experience at one of their smaller branches. I met Jerry at work, but I was unaware of his family's business empire until just before our wedding. He hadn't mentioned that he was in line to be the next CEO, which completely took me by surprise. He was so competent and well-liked that... Once he explained, everything seemed to fall into place, and suddenly I found myself as the wife of a future CEO. After we got married, Jerry relocated to the main company's office while I continued with my job. My father-in-law seemed supportive, telling me, I've heard you're a young leader at your workplace. Keep up the good work. However, my mother-in-law viewed things differently, questioning, Why would a wife neglect her home to work? She was strongly opposed to me having a job. Initially, I thought living separately from Jerry's parents would avoid any conflicts, but I was wrong. They expressed a desire for us to live together, and that's when our troubles began. When my father-in-law mentioned he was very busy and suggested it would be helpful to have someone around to take care of things, Jerry also liked the idea of us living together. I'm worried about Mom, and I've always lived here, Moving now just wouldn't work for me, he explained. I found myself in a position where I couldn't say no when they discussed the arrangement. My mother-in-law chimed in, Since everyone agrees it's a good idea, Emma, do you have any objections? Feeling cornered, I reluctantly agreed to move in with my in-laws. Once we were all living under one roof, the challenges began. My mother-in-law, who had already expressed disapproval of my job, started to make my daily life quite difficult, insisting I quit my job and take on all the household chores, despite me working full-time. If she found any fault with my cleaning, such as a speck of dust or a stray hair, she demanded I redo it. Initially, I tried to use her criticisms constructively and more thoroughly. However, Her scrutiny escalated to checking rarely clean spots, like behind the TV or between dressers, which I felt went beyond typical cleaning duties. Eventually, I stood up for myself. I can't clean these areas every day. I work just like Jerry. I'll do a thorough clean on weekends, so there's no need to redo everything today, right? My mother-in-law was infuriated by my response. How dare you talk back to me like that? She exclaimed. In her anger, she summoned Jerry, falsely accusing me of yelling at her and misrepresenting my suggestions as confrontational, complete with tears for effect. I hoped Jerry would see reason and stand up for me. Mom, Emma is working too. Maybe you could be a bit more understanding? I thought he might say. However, the reality was disappointing. Why did you upset Mom like that? She was only trying to help, he said siding with her. This response highlighted a stark difference in expectations and support within our family. Why are you getting upset? Jerry reprimanded me, ultimately siding with his mother. It was then I realized the only person in that household I might rely on was my father-in-law, but his frequent absences due to work left me to navigate the tension alone. I soon learned that challenging my mother-in-law only led to disputes that left me feeling deflated, as she would invariably complain to Jerry, who offered no support. Deciding it was best to avoid conflict, I adopted a quieter demeanor, which seemed the only way to maintain some semblance of peace. This strategy carried me through the year until I began experiencing health issues, prompting a visit to the doctor. The diagnosis wasn't just an illness, I was pregnant. Hopeful yet apprehensive about the family's reaction, I shared the news with Jerry first. You know how I've been feeling unwell lately? Well, I went to the doctor and guess what? 
I'm pregnant, I revealed. That's great, so I'm going to be a dad, huh? Can't wait. Do we know the gender yet? Jerry responded excitedly. Not yet, does it matter to you? I inquired, already sensing his underlying expectations. Of course it does. It has to be a boy, he declared. Jerry, being an only child, gave me the impression that having a son to continue the family business was crucial. What if it's a girl? I wondered aloud, concerned about how this might affect our family dynamics. Don't worry, I'm sure it's a boy, he reassured me, though I remained unconvinced. We decided to wait until the baby's gender was confirmed before telling his parents. When we discovered we were having a girl, I was overjoyed and uninterested in perpetuating any gender bias. Jerry's reaction, however, was less than enthusiastic. A girl? Are you sure? Get it checked again, he said, disappointment clear in his voice. His reaction left me anxious about how his mother would take the news. Despite his initial disappointment, I dreaded the conversation with my mother-in-law, wondering how we would navigate the challenges that lay ahead. Eventually, we knew we couldn't keep the pregnancy a secret from the in-laws any longer. I gently nudged Jerry to share the news. Well, I'm pregnant, he told them. My father-in-law's face lit up with joy. That's wonderful, Emma. We're finally going to have our first grandchild, he exclaimed with genuine happiness. However, my mother-in-law's reaction was immediate and pointed. So, what's the gender? she inquired. With a slight hesitation, I responded, It's a girl. A girl, huh? I hope she's as lovely as you, Emma, my father-in-law said warmly, clearly not concerned about the gender, but my mother-in-law's disappointment was palpable. A girl? Not a boy? It has to be a boy to make sense for Jerry, she muttered under her breath. I was taken aback by her reaction, but before the tension could escalate, my father-in-law stepped in. Honey, why would you say that? Whether it's a boy or a girl, they are still our grandchild. Can't you just be happy? He chided her gently. She seemed subdued after his reprimand, but I sensed her change in mood wouldn't last. True enough, as soon as my father-in-law left for work the next day, she confronted me. Just because you're pregnant doesn't mean you can slack off on the housework. You're not planning to quit your job, are you? If not, keep up with your chores. Pregnancy isn't an illness, you know. Hearing these words from another woman, particularly one who had been through pregnancy herself, was startling. It made me seriously consider whether staying here was the right choice for my child. My family's home is about a four-hour train ride away. Since my dad passed away early, my mom and older sister have been living there together. Perhaps if I shared everything with them, they might welcome me to stay. I began to feel that giving birth at my in-law's place might not be the safest or most supportive option, and I remembered that my family's home could offer a better, more caring environment. I decided to call my mom immediately. Mom, it's me, Emma. What's up? It's rare for you to call. She replied, What's going on? I'm pregnant, and I was thinking, Could I come home to give birth? You're pregnant? You should have told us sooner. Congratulations, of course, you can come home for the delivery, but have you talked this over with your in-laws yet? Not yet, I admitted. Make sure you discuss it properly with them. If they agree, then I see no issue at all, Mom advised, stressing the importance of clear communication for the well-being of my baby. Encouraged by my mom's support, I decided to discuss the plan with my husband. I'm thinking of going home for the birth, I mentioned casually. Oh, going home for the birth? I guess that's fine, he responded nonchalantly. My mom's here, so things should be okay around the house. His quick agreement surprised me, but anticipating potential resistance from my mother-in-law, I turned to my father-in-law. After some thought, I approached him. I think it might be best for everyone if I went home for the delivery. Would that be all right? He seemed surprised initially, but then reassured me. If that's what you want, Emma, then it's probably the best decision. I won't oppose it. Could you perhaps speak to your wife on my behalf? I asked timidly. I'll tell her, he promised, seemingly supportive of my decision. With his backing, I secured permission to go home for the delivery without any issues. 
However, on the morning I was scheduled to leave, I woke up to find my packed luggage missing. My heart sank as both my husband and father-in-law had already left for work, leaving me no choice but to confront my mother-in-law. Do you know where my luggage is? I hesitated to ask. Oh, that luggage. I got rid of it, she snapped. I don't need a daughter-in-law who causes so much trouble. Don't ever come back, she shouted aggressively. Stunned by her harsh dismissal, I realized that returning to my family was not only a preference but a necessity for my peace and safety. As she pushed me out the front door, I barely had time to react. I hadn't even slipped on my shoes. Clad in just my pajamas with only my smartphone in hand, I heard the front door lock behind me with a definitive click. It was a clear signal from my mother-in-law. She wanted me out, and there was no mistaking her seriousness. The thought struck me hard. If I lingered, that door might never open for me again. With this realization, I began to walk away, but the peak of summer made the barefoot journey outside nearly unbearable. Seeking some relief, I found refuge in a nearby diner. There, using the only possession I had, my phone, I called my mom, who was incensed by the situation and promised to arrive within an hour. Fortunately, she wasn't far away. I spent that anxious hour in the diner waiting for her. When my mom arrived, she didn't hesitate. She drove me straight back to our family home where my sister was already waiting. I shared everything, the harsh actions of my mother-in-law and the apparent indifference of my husband. My mom and sister quietly exchanged words, their murmurs leaving me wondering about their conversation. The next morning, being back at my family home felt like a breath of fresh air. When I went to fetch the newspaper, I opened the door to an unexpected sight. My mother-in-law and husband were kneeling outside. Emma, I'm so sorry it was all my fault. Please don't sever ties with my husband's company, my mother-in-law pleaded. Emma, I'm sorry too. Please, can we continue doing business with my dad's company? My husband added, his voice filled with regret. Confused, I had no idea what they were talking about. Then, suddenly, my mom and sister appeared from behind. What on earth are you two doing causing a scene this early? My mom asked sternly, her voice cutting through the morning air. What does resuming business mean? She probed, wanting to understand their sudden change of heart. To avoid any further disturbance, my mom invited them inside. The atmosphere was tense, with unspoken questions hanging in the air as we all stepped back into the house. Once everyone was seated, my husband began to plead his case. Would you please consider doing business again with my dad's company? He asked. My mom and sister, who managed the company my late father had left behind, listened intently. Curious about the details, I turned to my mom. What does it mean that they're doing business with my father-in-law's company? Yes, they work with one of their subsidiary companies, my mom explained. It's a major company within their group, second only to the main office. And their top client is your mom's company, my husband added, looking at me. This was news to me, and apparently to my husband as well. I chuckled. That's news to me, too. Reflecting further, I remembered something. Come to think of it, I recall my parents-in-law mentioning they've always been indebted to each other when they first met, I said. But the warmth of nostalgia quickly cooled when my mom interjected with firm resolve, I cannot continue doing business with a family that would send my daughter out in such a state with just her phone. I'm stopping our business dealings. My mother-in-law, visibly shaken by my mom's declaration, desperately pleaded, Please, I beg you, I'll do anything. Could you reconsider stopping the dealings with my husband's company? At that moment, my sister, with a smirk, chimed in. You said you'd do anything, right? So you'll agree to Emma's divorce and naturally you'll pay alimony and child support, right? Her words echoed in my mind. Just the day before, I had spoken to my husband about the situation. His response was dismissive. It's what you deserve, isn't it? This callous remark had only solidified my decision. Silently, I found myself agreeing with my mom's decision. Any remaining affection for my husband had evaporated. I would have brought up divorce anyway if my sister hadn't made the point so effectively. 
Thanks to my sister's well-timed comment, the dynamics of the conversation shifted decisively in our favor. My mother-in-law, though reluctant, finally asked, Even if it means agreeing to a divorce, will you resume business with my husband's company? With a knowing smirk, my mom pulled out her phone and made a call. It seems this lady here agrees to my daughter's divorce. She spoke clearly into the phone. From the speaker, my father-in-law's voice came through. Got it. Hey, Maria, I'm divorcing you and Jerry, you're fired. Those were the drastic conditions he set for resuming business. Moreover, my mom declared firmly, I cannot forgive the two of you for how you treated Emma. You both deserve to be punished. This unexpected turn of events led to my mother-in-law losing her husband and my husband losing his job, income, and the support of his family. The fallout continued with a bitter divorce between my in-laws, expertly managed by a top-notch lawyer from my father-in-law's side. During the proceedings, assets were divided, and my mother-in-law ended up paying a significant sum in compensation to my husband and me. I, too, proceeded with the divorce. Living with a husband who was so heavily influenced by his mother was no longer a viable option for me. I received compensation for the emotional pain inflicted by my mother-in-law and husband, as well as child support for our unborn child. The financial strain was so great on them that they had to dip into their savings and eventually take on debt. Under the powerful sway of my father-in-law and my mom, my now ex-husband found it challenging to secure a new job in his previous field and ultimately had to switch careers, moving into customer service. This marked a significant and perhaps humbling change in his professional life, underlining the profound consequences of the family turmoil. However, my ex-husband underestimated his new role in customer service and soon faced numerous complaints, leading to a swift termination. Now, he's living with his mother, barely scraping by with daily wage jobs. My mother-in-law and husband, once accustomed to a lavish lifestyle thanks to my father-in-law's generosity, now reside in a small one-bedroom apartment. Their relationship, once close, has soured, and they argue frequently. I sometimes wonder if there is any hope or joy left in their lives. Meanwhile, I safely gave birth at home to a healthy baby girl, surrounded by the support of my mom and sister. As things settle down, I'm planning to join my mom's company, looking forward to a new chapter in my professional life. I did inform my ex-husband about our daughter's birth, but he has not followed up, showing little interest. All I expect from him is to fulfill his obligations for child support. I have no intention of letting him be a part of our daughter's life. From now on, my focus is on moving forward and living a fulfilling life with my daughter, supported by the love and strength of my family.